Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Last week was the glorious return of a longtime segment that we, I don't know, we just like to freshen things up around here every year. And we said, what, what, what should we add? What could go? And we had kind of said back in the summer that the pigskin pecking order, especially because the Vikings are not expected to regularly be like a top 10 team. Mm. The Vikings were so offended that we ditched yep. the weekly ranking segment. Yep. They, they, they put it up on the whiteboard in the practice facility. Uh, these guys didn't think you would even crack the top 10 NFL teams often enough to do a weekly ranking segment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, they've been closer to the top than even 10. And so Judd, starting last week, we all, I think, did we all do it or did I do it? I can't remember. We like just flirted me. with it. I, just you? Oh, last week? Yep. yep. Last week it was last just Judd. Yep, yep, yep. Last yeah, year the and the one. years before, we all, the we, first all. One. Let's, let's yeah, we all did it. Let's see. We all did it, yeah. That's the first one, and now I got the second one. But Judd's oh. going to do this every week. Going, It'll be Judd's pigskin pecking order. Where do the Vikings rank in the NFL's top 10? Yep. So before we dive in, why don't you tell the audience about uh, the 15 pounds 15 you're down pounds? on this refresh, retool? Exactly right. You know what? I uh, I lost a, a bunch of weight a couple of years ago, and I talked about it extensively uh, thanks to my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers, their sports dad right there on the left and right. I gained a couple of pounds back, so I'm like, you know what? Time to go back to Livia for, as Phil just said, a retool. Down 15 pounds, feeling better. I think I'm looking, you know, looking pretty good. Now the clothes are fitting perfectly, and it's all because of a program that works. Livia Weight Control Centers, it's a lifestyle that is as simple as possible. It's not a bunch of, of food that you have to microwave. Yes, there is some food, but it's not a lot. It doesn't, they don't stop you from living your life. And probably most importantly, they don't pass judgment. They want to help you lose weight. They don't want to guilt you if you gain a couple pounds here and, and there. Uh, and also right now, take advantage of their uh, of their nutrition plan. First eight weeks for free. That's right. Your first eight weeks for free. You're saying, okay, sports dad, how much weight can I lose in eight weeks? Let me tell you right now. How about up to 20 pounds? How would you like to lose uh, 20 pounds in eight weeks for free? It's that great. Uh, their nutrition program is fantastic there also are medical options if that is the route that you choose to go and again eight weeks for free uh give them a call 855 go l-i-v-e-a livia.com l-i-v-e-a.com if you are trying to drop 15 pounds or more okay <laughs> Dex is just laughing. Okay. i'm trying to give my my friends at livia a plug oh i'm trying to get skin back order number 10 <laughs> livia <laughs> Number nine, eight five five, go Livia. Number yeah. eight, GLP one. Number seven. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to give them some love. They're, we appreciate Livia. Great friends, exactly right. I will never, uh, uh-uh, uh, ne- no, uh, uh-uh. uh. We appreciate Livia. All right, don't call for, don't call for. Okay, the pigskin packing order. Football. Start us off. How are okay. we navigating this? Well, it's it's ten teams. I'll start it. I'll start on first team out. So there's 15 potential teams. Because the Chargers and Broncos are actually playoff teams right now in the American Football Conference, but they're out. They're not the first out. The 49ers were in last week, not an NFC playoff team, but I dropped them out. And then the two NFC playoff teams that aren't going to make it are the Eagles, who, by the way, strength of victory, 333 for their opponents. Mm-hmm. So the Eagles are beating up on some bad. Teams. Is that better or worse than the Commanders? Um, it who also have a bad slightly, strength of win. It is. It is slightly worse. The Commanders are three thirty nine. Frauds are those okay. two teams. If they okay. had, if if the Jags, if the Jags had come back and beaten the Eagles, does Sirianni get fired? Because it would have been one of the funniest things of all time. Possibly. Yeah. Yes. It, so the first team out is the Arizona Cardinals who actually have a case, but there's a reason why they lose their case, in my opinion, coming off a victory against the Bears. Cardinals are 5-4. and four. They've won three consecutive games. Their strength of schedule is 613. Their strength of victory, 475. But you know what they are? Point differential, which we all like to look at. They're a minus 7. Yeah, they're kind of... So you got the minus going for you there. 
that's going to be held against you a bit. Now that they can change that. I've actually seen models of late in the past, uh, since Sunday, saying that the Cardinals are the favorites of some now to win the division, uh, the West. But anyway, they are the first team out for now. So, yeah, the, the point differential becomes more important in terms of like how sustainable is your success. The deeper you get into the season, yeah. it tells a story. Yeah. In the first three weeks, there might be some noise, a blowout. Oh, yeah. But uh, like you get nine games into a season, I don't know about the Cardinals. I don't know if you can sustain that. Okay. Well, 2022 Vikings. Yeah, no, they sustained enough to win 13 games. Correct. But then it was like, is it, are they for real? And then they lose a home playoff game to the Giants because correct. turns out they weren't for real. Exactly right. All right, so number 10, replacing the 49ers in the rankings, the Atlanta Falcons. They're coming off a win against Dallas. They are now 6-3. and three. They are a plus 5, so not great, but they are a plus 5. They have uh, two consecutive wins now. Strength of schedule is 514. Strength of victory, 420. So, not bad. Not bad. They are teetering, though. Like, the Cardinals could easily pass them. If the Cardinals continue on the track that they're, they're on, if the Eagles do, right, the Falcons could come out. But for now, they're number 10. The Falcons have been, I think, exactly what the Falcons and their fans hoped which is let's put a professional quarterback in here with these weapons yep, and watch this offense operate. And by golly, every single game, there's Kirk spreading the ball around, throwing for 200, 250 yards. And now Drake London got hurt, right? So that's something to to keep an eye on. But they got a couple of good running backs. They've got three-ish really good options uh, in terms of receivers and tight ends. So, yeah, and... I don't think that's a team that's going to win the Super Bowl, but if you were the Falcons looking to go from seven wins to playoffs and maybe 10 or 11 wins, whatever, like they are very much on track, very much on track. Yep, stability. Because Arthur Smith, who's now the OC in Pittsburgh, was an absolute uh, disaster as a head coach. All right, number nine, sticking in the same spot, coming off a bye week, is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Six and two. Now, their point... Differential is impressive. It's plus 68. They've won three consecutive games. Their strength of schedule, 429. Their strength of victory, 434. Um, a lot of the numbers indicate the Steelers are pretty damn good. Yeah. Again, again, Super Bowl team? Yeah, prob- no, I don't think so. But the Steelers are all... I, I mean, Mike Tomlin's consistency is remarkable. And again, the Steelers look like they are, if nothing else, they are a formidable playoff-type threat. Yeah, they are a lot better than most people, myself included. They have not played a division game yet. So they still Weird. have two against the Ravens, the Bengals. Their, their schedule definitely... Weird. Business picks up for them. And how much do we trust Russell Wilson? Is he... Is he a guy that's going to be there at a super high level at the end? Uh, but yeah, their upcoming schedule, so they have a bye week, but then it starts November 9th. They've got Washington at Washington, home against Baltimore the next week, plus games on the road against Philadelphia, Baltimore, Kansas City at home, Bengals mm. to finish. They have a gauntlet mm. schedule Fun. out of their bye, so it's a good thing for them. They've racked up six early wins. Interesting. All right. Much like the Steelers who stayed at nine, staying at number eight, the Washington Commanders. Ooh, they beat the it's a Giants. Disrespectful here. They're setting it. Yeah, I know. Until I get into the in into the stats a little bit. That's fair. The, the Commanders are seven and two. They are a plus seventy four. Very good. They've got a great young quarterback in Jaden Daniels. They've won three consecutive games. Here's my here's my problem. Their strength of schedule is a three ninety two win percentage. Their strength of victory is 339, and they just beat the Giants who are horse bleep. Yeah. So I feel like I'm teetering here. I actually like them. I like what I see. But then I look at, okay, who are you beating? I mean, the strength of schedule, so forget the, forget the victories, is 392. It's a cupcake. But that division going into the year was wide open for you. Knew Dallas was going to come back down. Yeah, Philadelphia, we, Philadelphia is actually better than I thought record wise they would be yep. with the way they ended last year. The key players they lost, Sirianni, just seems like he's in over his head. Uh, so thankfully, somebody stepped up in that division. 
I was hoping to be the Giants or well, the Commanders. Somebody just make a leap, and the Commanders did. I probably would have them nine or ten if Daniels was not their QB, and there was like an overachieving vet there. But he's such. He, I mean, he is a dynamic player, and and yeah. for the second consecutive year, looks like the best QB to be drafted. But he was taken at two, mm-hmm. just like the guy from the next team was. Dropping two spots from seven to five, the Houston Texans. Loss to the Jets was not good. Ugly game. The Texans, though, are, are good. They're six and three. Point differential, though, just a plus one. Um, strength of schedule, 481. Strength of their victories, 434. I like them still, uh, but I thought th- that was a bad loss. And, and, and plus, there's a lot of things that say they probably don't deserve to be in the top five right now. Yeah. So I dropped them out. I dropped them from five to seven. I believe I saw yesterday, CJ Stroud has the second most dropbacks pressured in the entire league. Yeah. Jets so he, the, yeah, you're right. He's running for his life. It's not the same as the rookie season for him. I know they didn't have digs last year, but now he's out this year. Nico Collins has been banged up. Uh, they're still six and three despite a lot of those problems. So you could look at it and five and one in conference. So they're going to have some tiebreakers. But yeah, I kind of felt like, they were going to be up there on the level, maybe like the 1A level of the AFC, and they're not. Like I would still put Chiefs, Correct. Bills, Chiefs here, and then there's like another tier of maybe Bills, and then, I don't know, like I would say Bills, Ravens, and then Texans, and whoever else. Speaking of, very appropriate that you brought up the Buffalo Bills. Moving up one spot from 7-6, to six, they beat the Dolphins on Sunday. The Bills are now 7-2. and two. They've got an MVP candidate, obviously, again, in Josh Allen. They are in point differential, a plus 87. Very impressive. They won four consecutive games. Strength of schedule, 410. Strength of victory, 333. Nobody circles the wagon. Yeah. I moved them up. I moved them up, but I didn't move them up into the top five. Yeah, they're... uh, This is like, at some point, Buffalo... I know Kansas City's undefeated, but... At some point, can you not find a way in January? This is a this is a rock solid Bills team. Yeah, they are better in so many ways. Having said goodbye to Stefan Diggs, they can now distribute around. Uh, yeah. They made the Amari Cooper trade. They can run the ball. Yeah, they they just I don't know they. I I feel like people kind of wrote them off a little bit. You know, they go oh, the classic Buffalo Bills again, but. Um, especially when they were six and six at one point last year, had to run the table just to get in. Yes. But this is a dangerous, dangerous football team. This might be the one ranking in the entire country where they are not a top five team. Yeah. Like you, I, uh, like you talk about the cojones to sit here and put them on my legal pad at six. That takes cojones. Yeah. But let's get to the top five, shall we? Let's do it. Number five. Coming off a loss to the Detroit Lions, dropping from four to five are the Green Bay Packers. Six and three, point differential plus 36. Strength of schedule, very impressive, 553. Strength of victory, 442. So I actually think the Packers, the the loss to Detroit was, you know, felt pretty lopsided. Not a great day. Jordan Love playing hurt. I think we, we could debate if he should have been playing or not. All of those things are true, uh, but it's also true that the Green Bay Packers, as much as Vikings fans probably would love to dismiss them now, cannot. They remain a good, solid football team. So they have they dropped one spot, but I still kept them in my top five, and I kept them above the Buffalo Bills. Jordan Love leads the league in interceptions. He is decidedly not the guy that we saw in the final seven-ish games of last season. He's not. We talked about that. So he's not terrible. Like, he's still a starting quarterback in the NFL. But I think part of the, the Packers fear mongering was like, what if that dude that we saw the last two and a half months is just the guy for the whole season? And okay, maybe injuries have played a part, but he has not been. He's due for one homage to Brett Favre every game. It seems it's not even like the interceptions are high. It's the dumb intercept. It's it, it. He throws some preposterously dumb passes. And we saw it yesterday or last week again on Sunday too. And I just don't know if I would have played him on on that turf on a rainy day with a groin problem. 
Like, can you set and throw well? Like, there, there, there were just, and look, he's not Jordan Love, but Malik Willis has had some success, right? I, I just didn't know if that was a really a smart move. Now, if you're playing indoors or it's a perfect day, perfect conditions, but with a groin, I, I don't know that I I, I would have risked that. And I don't think that, that he looked anywhere near being healthy. So that was sort of weird. Yeah. All right. That was number five. Let's move on to four. Let's stay close to home here, boys. Because at number four, dropping one spot, are your Vikings. Oh. Six, six oh, and two. Yeah. Here Point differential plus 59. Uh, strength of schedule, 522. Again, their strength of schedule is actually going to go down now because they are getting teams, you know, Jacksonville, mm-hmm. the Titans, the Bears. I mean, they have gotten through. The fact that they won five games against a real gauntlet is, is impressive. Strength of victory, 472. So the Vikings remain top five, and I do think that the Vikings are right now just from a standpoint of the optics and w- when you dig down a bit, I think the Vikings are the second best team in the conference to Detroit. Yeah. And I, I think we can deduce who your three top teams are and we'll find out in which order I will not fight you on any of the three teams. It looks like you are ranking above the Vikings. And I'm trying to like, if, if I had to play devil's advocate and say, okay, which of the teams behind the Vikings here? If you had to represent the Packers in a fight, like should they be ranked above the Vikings? I don't know that I don't know that there is any plausible argument other than just like you're a Packer fan. So sure. like the Vikings had you down by four touchdowns in the first half in your building and like okay, you kind of mounted a comeback. The Bill I think the Bills are the only team behind the Vikings on this list that would have a legitimate argument that if these two teams played right now on a neutral field. I think I do think the Bills would be favored to win that game, uh, but it would. I'd love to watch that. It'd be a very fun football game. A couple big arm athletic quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Let's get to the top three now. Uh, three. I moved them up three spots because I under ranked them last week because they were coming off a loss to Cleveland. But again, the numbers just proved to be so impressive, and they uh, they whooped up on the Broncos on Sunday. The Baltimore Ravens go from six to three. They're six and three. They're point differential plus sixty-four. But here's the here's the rub. Their strength of schedule is five thirty-two. Their strength of victory because of the loss to the Browns is five seventy-seven. Yeah. So like they are beating up on some very representable the good teams. Uh Baltimore's just damn good. Baltimore is good. I would say that that this is a reflection of the fact that, to, to your point about the Bills and Vikings, if the Ravens played the Vikings on a neutral field tomorrow, the Ravens, I think, win. They're just a tough team. L- Lamar Jackson, I think he had a perfect quarterback rating on Sunday. Yeah, he's... You know, for all we want to just... If, we just want to pick at him, right? He does this, he does that. But the fact is, this is a tough team. It's a really well-coached team, and they got a hell of... A quarterback, and then add to that Derrick Henry, who's having a, a an NFL Offensive Player of the Year type campaign. Baltimore is number three. Yeah, the the picking at Lamar, like literally with Lamar Jackson, his only flaw is that he's not Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. Correct. Like that's he's about to win. I think he's the favorite to win his third MVP this year. Mm-hmm. He's he's only 27, by the way, so he has years left of prime. Uh, Mobility-wise, he's got at least five or six more years left of high-end usage of his legs. But then as a passer, he leads the NFL in percentage of throws that are touchdowns, yards per attempt, passer rating, QBR, a bunch of other categories too, and all of the rushing categories for quarterbacks. He, and then you put Derrick Henry in there, and right. it's like they're doing these read options – yeah. Holy cow. Just a, a tsunami of a running game. And then, oh, by the way, oh, here's a play action. Boom, we've got five weapons out there that can decimate you over the top. Really, feels like about once a month, they're just up like 35 to 10 on somebody. They just have like a four yeah. touchdown, five touchdown lead on somebody. You know? And they do kick your ass. Like, like they beat you up, too. They beat you up. So yep. the Ravens are three. Uh, staying at two. The Kansas City Chiefs. 8-0, plus 56 in the point differential category. 
Strength of schedule, 471. Obviously, the strength of victory because they're 8 no is the exact same. If they lose, I will. I, I, I was at the Wolves game last night, had this on the laptop, and I was thinking, if they lose, I don't think they're staying at 2. Uh-uh, Sports Dad, you're going to drop them. But they're 8 no. They've got Mahomes. They're the Chiefs. They deserve respect because you know when, when they get to the playoffs, the odds say that they'll find a way to win. So I left the Chiefs at two, despite the scare that they got last night. And also to backtrack to our conversation on Monday about the Colts and the Vikings game, it's a it gets dangerous when you start to pass judgment on wins. For sure, like that's a close win. I don't. That Chiefs should win by more than that. It, that gets that's a really slippery slope, right? Because like. All these other, I mean, look at the Ravens, for instance. You might watch the Ravens and think, boy, they're just like the way that they dominate teams every other week. Yeah, and they do. They, they'll they just decimate somebody 38 to 10 or whatever, but they've also lost three games. They started 0-2 because they were, well, th- one of those losses was to the Chiefs, ironically. Right. And that's the thing about the Chiefs, not to mention Travis Kelsey has 24 catches in his last two games now. And DeAndre Hopkins just became like their number one receiver overnight last night. So yes, they, um, it's like they added one of the great wide receivers and tight ends middle of the season because Kelsey was non-existent until last week. And you talk about a team that makes good in-season trades. The Chiefs are masterful at that. Yeah. And they don't concern themselves with, oh my God, but if we give up this draft pick in 2026, our life might end. Yeah. They just go out and, and, and that's the thing is too. I love the fact, and the Vikings are at least uh, right now and with crazy have taken a little bit of a page. The uh, It's trying to win right now. It's like, if you are presented with an opportunity where you've banked five wins, six wins. Yeah, that's great. Use that. Unless you think it's a complete fluke, use that. So, all right. And that leaves us with the top team. Not surprising, not surprising at all. Staying at number one. For the second consecutive week, because that's the amount of time I've done this exercise. The Detroit Lions coming off an impressive win at Green Bay. I think it was their first win or their first game. No, it was their first win outside. They can look. They can play inside. They can play out outside. As far as Dan Campbell is concerned, they can play in the freeway. They'll beat the cars. They are 7-1. and one. Their point differential is a plus 110. They've won six consecutive games. Their strength of schedule is 507. Their strength of victory is 508. I mean, they're the best team in the league. They're yep, the best team in the league. And and the sooner, barring an injury, the sooner that we all get our heads around the fact that they are likely to be playing in New Orleans in February, the better. Yeah. I'm just Googling NFL best single season point differentials. They are not on that pace. I just want to see. Because the Patriots, yeah, when the Patriots went undefeated, they were a plus 315. Oh, my God. The Lions are only a plus 110 right now. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, here we go. Okay. Well, there's been a lot of teams. Uh, actually, you know what? It looks like, is this right? Maybe only, like, 22 teams ever have been a plus 200. We can, we'll double check that. That might be wrong, but, like, if you if you get to a plus, my point is, if you get to a plus two hundred point differential, that is domination. Yes. So they are definitely the most dominating team in the NFL, and in the NFC right now. In fact, I let's transition this. We can we can add this to the to the weekly uh, slate here on this bonus episode. Mm-hmm. A playoff picture if the playoffs started today and where the Vikings sit too. So we'll do that in just a second, and then we can talk about the rest of the NFC. But uh, Nicolay Law is here as the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. Nicolay Law knows that when you or a loved one gets injured, ordinary life can come to a stop. Things can get complicated, and that's where Nicolay Law comes in. Russell Nicolay and his team that serves the Twin Cities communities that we live in here, uh, they're just your normal everyday folks that happen to have law degrees to get you the compensation you deserve after an accident. So if you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay. NicolayLaw.com or 1-855-NICOLAY. Uh, also, got this glorious 65-inch, brand new as of two and a half months ago, Roku TV in our living room. And it's just been great for football season, man. Whether football's being played on 
Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Roku has a new line of smart TVs for you to watch football on or whatever you want to watch, movies, entertainment. Uh, it's up to you. So go to Roku.com or shop at a retailer near you to find out about the Roku Pro Series 4K TV. We're also giving away a 75-inch Roku Pro Series 4K TV on the Scorn Earth app right now. So uh, go to the Scorn Earth app, open it. It's free. You can register in the listener reward section. You can enter to win this 75-inch Roku Pro Series 4K TV. So football. if the playoffs started today, and by the way, Judd goes, yeah, yeah, Lions, Chiefs, uh, Ravens, Vikings 4. So mm-hmm. Vikings 4. Uh, Packers, Bills, Texans, Commanders, Steelers, Falcons to round out. If the playoffs started today in the NFC, the Vikings would be the five seed, the number one wild card seed, and they would be playing the Arizona Cardinals in Phoenix, in Glendale. So Lions would get the bye. It would be go Commanders would be hosting the Packers, Falcons hosting the Eagles, Cardinals hosting the Vikings. So what are your thoughts on that matchup right now, Cardinals-Vikings? Yep. And behind the Lions, so Commanders, Falcons, Cardinals, Vikings, Eagles, Packers, which of those six teams has the best chance to go into Detroit and knock off that team? Oh, God. It's the Vikings, right? I mean, probably, I think yeah. it's close. It might be. Yeah. yeah. Well, Maybe and, the but, Commanders with just... But here's the thing. Vikings and Cardinals. Like, the Cardinals have some strengths here and Kyler in, I mean, Kyler could completely melt down or he could be a, a joystick, which we've seen, which could give the Flores defense problems. So, I mean, I think if you ask me, would I rather play? Cause we, we talked about this last week. And at that time, I think the Vikings were the six seed and the Falcons were, were the three. So you would go to Atlanta to play. I think I would rather play Kirk cousins and the Falcons first round at the Falcons. than I would at the Cardinals. Really? Yeah, I strongly disagree with that. I, 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 hmm. I mean, you, you look at, I mean, they're a negative, they're a negative point differential team. Um, also, Arizona, not a hostile place to play at all. In fact, I would even envision that being a half home game, even it being a Atlanta's playoffs for, either, for the Vikings. Fal- Atlanta's not, but Atlanta at least has some more swagger and power, prowess to it. Like Arizona, I, I would, I mean, I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself. That's a dream matchup Ooh. for the Vikings in the playoffs versus the Falcons. Like think- the Falcons would be a fun game. But the Cardinals would be the number one if you were ranking them, in my opinion. I would much. I would prefer Kirk to Kyler. It's a playoff game against Kirk. Okay, hold on a second here. I'm heating my hands. I mean, up. that's listen, man. That's Kirk is playing really well this year. Yeah, He's playing really well this year. Oh, absolutely. I would rather. I mean, I I don't I don't really fear the only team that I like fear on this list is probably the the lot like football fear the Lions because right. all the reasons we talked about right. In terms of who do I think is a more favorable matchup on the road, I'm with Declan. I would, I guess, I would rather draw the Cardinals than the Falcons. But I, I'm not gonna. I don't think this is worth like getting into a knockdown drag them out because bring on the Falcons too. That would right. be so much fun. Right. Be a lot of fun. I, I would rather game plan for Kirk than Kyler. Well, Kyler, yeah. I mean, the mobility is yeah. is a factor, but I would also argue there that. The Vikings are very well equipped with how shifty and switchable and fast their defense is. Yeah, if you Josh Metellus, Blake Cashman, if he's back. But I like, know what Kirk, but but I mean, you know Kirk, and you know what Kirk can do, and you know that Kirk's had a really good year, and then the playoffs come, and unless he has turned a corner in his life, which I don't see, you know what Kirk. I mean, you know his tendencies. I I would prefer Kirk. Now now the Falcons do have some really nice offensive pieces, but John. Robinson, when used correctly, is really good, but um, Kyler's Kyler's joystick ability, I think, could be an issue for this team. Yeah, and then so beyond the seven seed right now, teams that are trying to, so you got the six and three cut off for the wild card, and then it's a two game or a game and a half drop to the four and four Bears, four and four Rams, four and four Niners. Buccaneers yep. were four and four; they lost last night. Yep. I do think the Rams and the 49ers in particular are going to have something to say about yes. this playoff race before it's over. Correct. But they've got a lot of work to do just record-wise and some of the tiebreakers. Yep. If, if San Francisco gets McCaffrey back now, and I think he's back practicing, um, and they're healthy, 
I think they probably overtake the Cardinals and they do. I don't know if scares me is the right word, but they certainly would have the experience in these situations on the, and if you have to go on, on the road, See, I would consider that a much less favorable environment than, than uh, the Cardinals or the Falcons. If they were, that's a point. talking point for future episodes and that it's, it is unlikely that the Vikings pass the lions. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, right. but you now, like you, you're going to have to beat them and have tiebreaker, yep. which we won't find out until the end of the season. Again, yep. not impossible, but like the Lions are likely winning the division, which means that you are fighting for the five seed at best. Mm -hmm. If you get the five seed, you're playing likely again the winner of the NFC West, which is jumbled up right now. And I think the likely winner of the NFC West is either the Rams or the 49ers. You just lost to the Rams in LA. It's a tough beat. Yep. Uh Niners you beat, but like that's that's gonna be that's a draw right there on the road against one of those teams. Yeah. I think I'd rather play the Rams than San I think San Francisco is about the last team I would want to play in the first round. Yeah, they've done this before too, like three years ago where they yeah. started three and five, then they got healthy, and then they just like they're on the back stretch, right? And then game. they just yeah. come bang, they come right to, to the front and and win the race. Yeah, I I don't want to play them healthy, man. Debo Samuel healthy. I'll oh. play anyone anywhere, anytime. I'm not, well, not, I'm not scared. And Campbell will too. Right in the freeway. Bang. Play the cars. I like that. That was good. He'll kick your ass. Mm -hmm. All right, there it is. Judd's pecking order here. Where do the Vikings rank? As of right now, fourth, if you agree or disagree. It. Time to frame it. First team out is highlighted. I think you should pin those up on the wall behind you. There's no room on my wall now. I got all my <laughs> there stuff is. up there. No, that's true. A lot of stuff. Uh, let us know in the YouTube comment section if you vehemently disagree with anything that was just talked about here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you missed our state of the offense episode, we gave you two episodes here today on this Tuesday, plus meat and potatoes. Yeah, we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. We'll see you for a write that down Wednesday tomorrow.